Welcome back to Russian Through Propaganda. Today is day 35, and uh, this is sort of our final lead-up to our Verbs of Motion uh, coverage, which will last, I believe, for four, four full days. All right, before we get to those, we need to look at some more uh, prepositional phrases and uh, talk more generally about a, a very important topic that's going to carry over directly to our use of, of Russian Verbs of Motion, right? That topic is simply uh, uh, the distinction between where, where to, and where from. You know, sort of draw little arrows or something that way, right? To illustrate that these are very different things, right? If um, uh, where in Russian is gdia, right? Everyone knows what where means, right? You're in a location, right? So you're you're static, or you're doing something, or or moving, or whatever it is you're doing within a given location, right? That's where, and in Russian, that's the dia. Okay, now what about the second, so let's take an English example, like for example, where were you working? Where were you working? Okay, that's clearly a gdia example. In Russian, we're asking simply where. Uh, now, let's think of another example in English. Where were you going? Okay, now note that in English, we've used the same question, where. We've used that same question word to ask something that's really a, a rather different question. We're not asking about uh, where someone was, but where they were going to, right? So a, a more complete way to ask that question was, where were you going to? Or where were you headed to? And someone might say, well, to the library, right? So not in the library, but to the library. So in some cases in English, we do make these distinctions between where and where to, but in others, we don't. And again, the question word is one example, right? We use where for both instances. Um, now, there's a third possibility in Russian, as we mentioned, where from, right? And in English, we would usually make some kind of a distinction, like where are you from or where, where are you coming from or something like that. We would usually throw in a from to make that clear, right? So in any, in any event, we have three very different uh, situations, right? Uh, and in English, they can be somewhat fuzzy. In Russian, they're extremely distinct. In fact, we have three different question words for each of these situations, right? Gdje asks where, kuda asks where to, right? Kuda, and note that there's motion involved there. We're going somewhere, to somewhere. And finally, atkuda, that's from where. Now, that should be easy to remember because we've seen what already. We know that it means essentially from, right? Atkuda means where from. Gdje, kuda, atkuda. Okay, so much of our grammar today and, again, for the, the rest of this chapter and, and, and beyond is going to involve just simply realizing that in Russian, those three questions uh, kind of point out these three very distinct categories uh, that are each going to use entirely different constructions in Russian to describe, again, being somewhere, going to somewhere, going coming from somewhere. And by the way, this is another instance where uh, English has lost uh, certain distinctions that it, at some point historically would have shared with Russian and with other Indo-European languages, right? So, for example, uh, think to your experience reading Shakespeare, some older Russian, some older English. You may remember questions not only where, but uh, whither and whence, right? Where really means, you know, gdje, like in Russian, whither means where to, right? That would be kuda, and whence would mean where from. That would be like the Russian atkuda. We'll see other examples of like this later, uh, for example, with the idea of here. We used to have a, a, a set of sort of adverbs in, in English. Here is telling where, uh, hither is telling where to, and hence is telling where from. So you may think of examples like Get thee hence, meaning get out of here, right? Get, 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 get thyself from here, out, out of here. Uh, one other example is, uh, what about there, right? Well, there traditionally would have told where. That would be like a gdje example in Russian. And then we have examples uh, uh, thither, or I've also heard tither, right? Tither, or thither. Uh, I, by the way, I don't know even how this is supposed to be said. I've heard Brits say thither, but uh, I, I've heard, you know, growing up in the American South, I did hear people say tither. It was usually part of 
hither and thither. I mean, they, these these will pop up in certain phrases. People don't usually use them regularly, but these you know they crop up. So however you choose to say that, thither thither meant to there, right? And uh, thence would mean from there, right? So uh, again, those would all three be be very different different words, different categories in Russian. Okay, so if you if you follow that at all, then you're going to be well prepared for the rest of today's lesson, right? Again, let's just recap. Где, куда, and откуда are three question words that ask very different questions in Russian, right? Где is where, куда is where to, откуда is where from. And essentially today's lesson is going to show us ways to answer those questions, right? How to use prepositions to tell about being in a location, moving to a location or toward a location, and coming from a location. Now, as with so many things in Russian, this may seem at first glance like, oh, that's not really that hard, right? Uh, everyone can understand what kuda means, right? It's, we're going to a location. But again, this is one of those things that students tend to mess up for a prolonged period, right? Even in the second year, right? Because again, they think in English, they don't, the, the English does not lead them to make this, this distinction clearly. So if they're translating or whatever it is they're doing, you know, where were you going? Well, that's not где, right? That's a that's going to be in Russian куда, because the idea is we're moving toward or into a location. So, as you might imagine, right? We talk about location. We talk about going places all the time. So, all of these constructions are going to be extremely common in Russian. Uh, you know, that's why these these verbs of motion we're going to be even beginning today using with these expressions. Uh, that's why they're so useful. They're difficult, but they're also extremely common and extremely useful. Okay, so the best way to do this is uh, <clears throat> to basically get three columns. Whenever we're presenting some of this grammar today, we need to present it in terms of three columns, right? Где, куда, откуда, right? Uh, so let's start out with that. Uh, actually, let's start out with a post here. Наш триумф в космосе, гим стране советов. Our triumph in the cosmos, or in, in outer space, is a hymn to the country of Soviets. Okay, so obviously a poster heralding the uh, Soviet space program. Okay, let's look at this phrase, в космосе, в космосе. Okay, uh, what, we're going to do this a lot, you'll get used to it. I'll ask you, what kind of phrase is в космосе? Is it a где phrase, a куда phrase, or an откуда phrase, right? Because again, we really need to be thinking in terms of those three categories, где, куда, откуда, in order to make sure we're understanding the Russian. Okay, this is the only kind of phrase we've seen. We learned this earlier in day 31 or whatever, right? When we learned the prepositional case, we learned that в космосе means in the cosmos. That's telling where, right? So we would say that в космосе is a где expression, right? Uh, now, if we look at a, another poster, which is later in the book on page 178, we see another expression, в космос. Okay, we haven't covered that grammar yet. We will in a moment. That is a куда expression. That is the куда equivalent of the где expression, в космосе. Right, cosmosia tells where, that's in the cosmos, in outer space. Cosmos tells kuda, it tells where to, right, and it's expressing movement into the cosmos. Right, so the second poster of cosmos is something like, it's a, it's a rallying cry, right, let's go into outer space, right, um, telling where we're going to. Okay, so let's look now at a quick table, and we'll run down some of these examples. What we see here is that we have uh, two, so far, two sets of prepositions. That's the best way to think about this is, uh, for example, let's take biblioteca. Okay, we would call that a v noun, right? Remember, we're, we're assuming that locations are going to use v by default, unless, you know, for all the reasons we discussed, maybe they're a non-noun, right? So v nouns are taking one set of prepositions, and here they are to express gdje, we get v plus prepositional, as we know. Now, this is new. To get kuda, we get v plus accusative. Same preposition, but with accusative. Now, by the way, if you've studied other uh, 
Indo-European languages, you may be able to just think about the grammar you know. You may be able to think of a similar distinction, right, where you get whatever case you have describing location, um, and then you get the accusative cropping up when you get, um, you're moving into a location. If you think about when they would study Latin or German, for example, you would see those types of distinctions. Okay, uh, anyway, finally, akuda, right? How do we tell we're coming from the library? That would be is plus genitive. Okay, so there's our first set of prepositions, three prepositions. V plus prepositional, V plus accusative, is plus genitive, meaning literally out of or from. Those are the three prepositions we use to tell gdje, kuda, and atkuda when we're talking about a V noun like biblioteka. Okay, so let's get now our full panoply of uh, location expressions. Bibliotekje, that means in the library or at the library. That's a gdje expression. The kuda version of that, to the library, right, that motion is involved, that's bibliotiaku. Okay, no, we've changed the ending to accusative, we get bibliotiaku. From the library is bibliotiaki, is plus the genitive. Now, let's look at the second example. Vagzal is a na noun, right, for you know reasons we discussed. Maybe it's not entirely clear why this is a na noun, but for whatever reason, it, it is a non-noun. Okay, that means that to tell, to express at the station, at the train station, we use navagzalia, as we already learned, right? Na plus prepositional gives us a gdje expression. Na plus accusative, now note here we're keeping na again, but changing to the accusative case, that answers a kuda question, right? To the station, from the station, again, we see here this is a, a different set of prepositions. Here, to tell atkuda, where from, we use s plus the genitive case. That means literally something like from off of, right? From off of a flat surface. Um, so you, knowing that literal meaning, it can help you understand why we're using that instead of is, right? We're not literally moving out of a container or something. We're moving rather from off of something that's thought of as an open, flat space. Okay, so our set of expressions for vagzal are navagzalia, that's a gdje expression, navagzal, to the station, that's kuda, and svagzala, that's atkuda, that's telling where from. Let's look at one more example here with an event. Now this is kind of overkill, right, because this is just another na-noun, but again here, this is an event, so any event we can be certain is going to be treated like a na-noun. Naleksi, naleksiu, sleksi. Right again, we're using that na set of prepositions. Okay, so we've actually covered all of today's grammar more or less. Now let's let's just take a bit more care to see some more examples. Let's look at some na some v nouns, right? Now remember the vast majority of locations of, of nouns like this in Russian are going to be v, and if we're in doubt, we could we might as well assume that they're going to be v, right? Unless they're clearly, a, a very literally, a flat surface like a table. Okay, so when in doubt, choose v, and if we're dealing with a v noun, right? We're filling in these three columns. We're going to use this set of prepositions: v plus prepositional, v plus accusative, is plus genitive. I'll just read through these: v komnatye, v komnatu. Is komnatu. All right, now note how obviously those are saying three completely different things. Uh, bar, barje, bar, is bara. Rukzak. Okay, here we're speaking kind of more literally inside the backpack, right? Inside this container. Vrukzakia, vrukzak. That would mean that we put something into the backpack. And taking something out of the backpack, that would be is rukzaka. Okay, again, because that's a container, not really a location, here we're using these prepositions in their very literal sense, inside and then from out of. Okay, restaran, uh, restarani, restaran, is restarana. Vabshijitie, vabshijitie, vabshijitie. Is Abshijitia. Moskva, there's a city. Remember, all cities are V. 
в Москве, в Москву из Москвы. Okay, just to point out the obvious, right? В, we have a, a, an instance of a kind of ambiguity, right? Uh, we have to look at the case following it, right? To distinguish где expressions from куда expressions, right? В plus prepositional is где, в plus accusative is куда. Got a quick poster. Tractor в поле, что танк в бою. Again, it's somewhat hard to tr understand this grammar literally, at least at this stage, but the idea is that a tractor in the field is what a tank in battle is, right? So the idea is that a tractor in the field is as good as a tank in battle. Uh, bayou is the phrase here. That now, now, what type of phrase is that? That is a gdje phrase, right? A tank in battle. Bayou is a gdje expression. What about folie? Well, also a gdje expression, right? Uh, folie in the field. Now, by the way, with with uh, uh, neuters like folie, right? Soft neuters. Uh, there again is an additional ambiguity. Folia all by itself could mean in the field or into the field, right? So there, for 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 a few words like that, neuters, soft neuters, uh, we would need some context sometimes to distinguish between gdia and kuda. Here are a couple of quick posters using the same word uh, uh, in right in the gdia and kuda expressions, right? The first one says zbirka si dingi na kapila. Okay, so this uh, Soviet woman uh, saved up her money. Where? Where did she save her money? Zbirkasia. Okay, Zbirkasa was essentially a Soviet, the Soviet version of a savings bank. Zbirkasa. Okay, so what? Uh, what? What would we say this phrase Zbirkasia is? Is that I think I said it already, but is that a gdje kuda ratkuda phrase? Well, look at the ending. Yeah. Okay, that's prepositional. So, zbirkasia, that is a gdje expression. It's telling us where she saved her money. Now, look at the next poster, kind of a famous one. Kto kuda ja zbirkasu. Okay, this first phrase is, again, very pithy, very kind of colloquial Russian. It's a little hard to understand at this point. But although we can, let's try to explain it, because we do know these words now. We, we, we There's really no, nothing standing in our way. Kto Kuda, literally, who to where, who to where, right? Two question words. Okay, now the meaning here is that um, people go wherever they want. People can go wherever they want, right? Any individual person can go to whatever location they want. Aya, right? But I, meanwhile, where where am I going? Zbirkasu, zbirkasu. Okay, uh, now. What is zbirkasu? Is that a gdje, kuda, or atkuda phrase? Correct. It's kuda, right? Because we see the accusative ending, zbirkasu. This guy is on his way to the zbirkasa. Okay, so uh, very important grammar there. Uh, let's look at the next page. Um, now, earlier, by the way, we saw the phrase bayou, which means in battle. Here we see a, an additional poster. Maladjoj boy zarodinu. Here we're calling for young people, I guess here specifically young men, into battle, right? We're calling them to enter the battle, right? V boy. Okay. If bayou was a gdje expression, what is v boy? It is a kuda expression. It's zarodinu, right? Fighting for the, the homeland. Well, we've seen that already. Right? Za plus accusative. Okay, let's go through a few nouns. This is hopefully fairly easy, but it gives us a chance to practice our case endings. We may especially need some review of the genitive, maybe, maybe accusative, although accusative is quite easy, as we know so far. Okay, so these are all v nouns. So again, we just want to realize that they are v nouns, and we're going to use this set of three prepositions to tell где, куда, откуда. This is one of those places in, in, in Russian where it's just really useful not to kind of lose yourself in just this rote exercise, but really try to use your imagination. And when you hear and say and write, for example, in the first one, strania, 
any visualize what that means. We're in a country. We're telling where we are. We're inside. We're in the country. The second column, stranu, we're moving into the country. We're going to the country. Okay, so visualize what that means in Russian, what, what that phrase conjures up in, in the Russian mind, right? Yeah, we're going to be even more worried about this soon when we add verbs of motion, right? It's, it's going to get even more complicated. Okay, uh, finally, how do we say from the country? Is stranui, right? Is stranui. That's the Atkuda phrase. Okay, cosmos. Uh, v cosmosie tells where. V cosmos tells where to. And is cosmosa tells where from. Number three, restaurant. V restaurant tells where. Gidia. Uh, v restaurant, accusative, tells where to. And from the restaurant, is restaurana tells where from. Atkuda. Okay, uh, Moskva, let's tell Gdje, v Moskvie, in Moscow. Kuda, v Moskvu, to Moscow. Atkuda is from Moscow, is Moskvi. Uh, by the way, there may be a typo in your book. The, it, the stress on Atkuda here in the table, it should, it should be Atkuda, not Atkuda. Okay, so that's an obvious typo. Uh, I apologize for that. I'll have to fix it in future editions. Atkuda, atkuda, atkuda. Okay, um, number, let's see, yeah, another city. Peterburg, let's tell where. Peterburgie, Peterburgie. To Petersburg, kuda, v Peterburg. From Petersburg, atkuda. That is Peterburga, the, the genitive ending. Abshijitie, your dorm. In the dorm, где is в общежитии. Remember that special soft ending in the prepositional. Куда, right, to the dorm, is в общежитии. Accusative, no change for the neuter. From the dorm, or out of the dorm, is общежитие. Е becomes я. Number seven, Россия. Okay, a country. Those are going to be в usually. В России. В Россию. Is Raisi. Okay, please learn those, by the way. I think I've been on this rant before, but we should really know how to spell the name of the country we're studying. I mean, shouldn't we? I think you'll all agree. I mean, it's amazing how students, I, you know, I'm not really sure why this is, but they they seem to have the, the darndest time learning how to spell Raisi. Okay, so, and here we see our full set of expressions. Raisi, Raisiu, is Raisi. Okay, so we're going to talk about, use those a lot in terms of talking about being in Russia and going to Russia and returning from Russia. Hopefully you'll return home from Russia. Okay, uh, number eight, Francia. Okay, another country. Gdia in France would be va Francie. Okay, we get the mobile vowel because of the F plus an, another consonant. Kuda to France would be va Francie U. Va Francie U. And from France, out of France, atkuda is Francie, is Francie. Number nine, an apartment, quartiera. Gdia, right, where? Quartiria, in the apartment. Kuda, where to? Into the apartment, that's quartiru. From the apartment, out of the apartment, atkuda, that's is quartiri. Number ten, uh, teatr. Okay, where? That's going to be theatria. Remember that theater is not an event, right? We mentioned that already. Theater is going to be always a place in Russian. We are Russia. In Russian, we are in the theater, right? So it is not a non-noun. Yeah, remember, if you're, going, if you're naming the event you're going to see in the theater, then the event itself would be a non-noun, like an opera, a concert, a ballet, whatever. Okay, uh, to the theater, that's theater, right? Kuda. And from the theater, out of the theater, atkuda is teatra. Number 11, magazine. V magazine, v magazine is magazina. Okay, right? Gdje, kuda, atkuda. Uh, number 12, gastinaya. That's one of those feminine adjectives that's standing alone as a noun. So here we're going to need adjectival endings. 
What's an adjective? Always an adjective. Gastimi means in the living room. In the living room, kuda is gastimuyu. And out of the living room, from the living room, atkuda is gastimui. Number 13, moria. Okay, there's a, a soft neuter. So uh, in the sea would be vmoria. Into the sea would be vmoria. And again, with that particular type of noun, we don't see any distinction whatsoever. So we would need context to know which it is. Uh, out of the sea would be ismoria. Ismoria. Right, ye becomes ya. By the way, some good advice. Nipuskai kazlava garot. Uh, don't let the goat into the garden, right? Now, kaziol, you see there, that's a masculine animate noun, uh, right? So this accusative looks like a genitive, and we see vagarod. Okay, what is vagarod? Gdia uh, kuda at kuda. That is a kuda phrase, right? Don't let the goat into the garden because it will eat everything in sight. I guess most of you probably know about goats. They will eat almost anything. Um, Right, so hence the expression, if you let a goat into your vegetable garden, you shouldn't expect anything to be left. Um, okay. Uh, I could tell you a story, an anecdote about, well, let's put it this way. Uh, kazyol is an insult uh, in Russian, right? So if you call someone a kazyol, it's insulting. And by the way, that's a, um, that's a fun little game. I'll, I, I always like to tell students who may know various languages or be studying various languages, or to just think about uh, in, in a particular language, what, what animal is regarded as like the worst insult, right? And, and, and why that might be the case, right? So, uh, you know, there are any number of th animals, you could, names you could call people in Russian, like svinya, or you could call people a pig, or a stupid karova, a stupid cow, or something like this. But kaziol is sort of like the, the go-to insult if you're confining yourself to, to, yourself to animals. Of course, there are much worse things you can say in Russian, but that's a topic for another day, right? But uh, even calling someone a kaziol can lead to some, some um, horrible consequences. And I'll tell you a quick anecdote, and why not, right? I'm, in, I'm under no time limits here. So one time I was riding around in Moscow, kind of in the outskirts of Moscow, on a mashutka, which is a kind of a little private shuttle bus type thing. And... Um, I was somewhere in the middle, and back in the back seat, there were a couple of students who, I don't know, they looked like they were 17 or something like this, or 18. And uh, in the mashrutka, you uh, you call out your stop. It doesn't stop automatically. It doesn't stop the way a bus would. You have to basically shout out to the driver and tell him, you know, stop at the bridge or stop at the next bus stop or whatever. And this can be horrible, especially if you're a student of Russian, because as you can, you can imagine, it's kind of nerve-wracking to have to shout at the driver and have this communication, much less specifying where you wanted to stop. So by the way, if you're in Russia, I suggest that you not take Mashrutki unless until you kind of get more proficient at Russian. Um, by the way, I, I feel like they're not quite as common as they used to be nowadays, but they definitely still exist. Uh, Anyway, so the students called out their stop, and the vaiditus, right, the driver, didn't hear them, and so he drove right past it, and they got, they got angry, uh, <laughs> to put it mildly, and the guy cried out something like vaiditus kaziol or the kaziol or something like that. Something it sounds kind of stupid. I mean, it's not like a very intense uh, outburst of expletives, right? But he basically said, "You're a goat. You know, you drove past our stop, right?" Okay, the driver didn't like that at all, so he pulled over immediately, very abruptly, uh, got out of the car, walked around the mashrutka, pulled open the sliding door, and literally dragged out one of the student who said this basically by his hair, by his shirt or whatever, threw him down and just kicked the daylights out of him. Uh, and, so, and I forgot the main point of the story. <laughs> he was... As he was walking around calmly, you know, to, to punish the student, he said, Zakazlad Vietish, right? Meaning you'll answer for goat, literally. Meaning you'll answer for the fact that you just called me a goat, right? You're gonna pay for calling me goat. And um, I was in the I was traveling with a Russian friend at the time and he he thought it was very funny and I, I must admit that I laughed as well. I mean the guy wasn't 
horribly injured, but he wasn't. He and his little friend were left on the roadside, and the guy just <laughs> drove right off, and off we went, right, uh, about our merry way, while this guy sat licking his wounds on the side of a <laughs> Moscow <laughs> highway. Oh, all the, all the memories of life in Russia. I wish there were time to tell more stories, but I guess I should move on right now. Um, okay, let's, let's quickly introduce verbs of motion. This is a very brief introduction. We're just going to get a couple of examples and to use in exercises, basically. Idiosh uh, and yedish. Okay, the idiosh means you are going on foot. You are on your way by foot. And yedish, the yedish means you're on your way by vehicle. Okay, so note a couple of things. We are making a distinction between types of motion, right? Are you going by foot or are you going by vehicle? Okay, more on that tomorrow. As we'll see later, this, these verbs idiosh and yedish, we're going to call those determinant verbs. They express being on your way somewhere, right? For example, idiosh, you're on your way by foot, or yedish, you're on your way or underway by vehicle. Okay, so for now, let's just take these two examples and just use them in, in some uh, questions just to get, get some early examples of how verbs in motion are used with these location expressions we've just learned today. For example, Kudati Josh, whither goest thou, right? To where are you going, right? Kuda. Okay, now let's, we've got to be very careful. Kuda, kuda, kuda. That's a where to question. We've got to answer a where to question with a where to answer. Right, so we need v plus accusative. In this example, v bibliotheku, bibliotheku, to the library. We can also also ask atkuda, atkuda te idiosh, where are you on your way from? Where are you coming from? Is bibliotheki right? We have to answer an atkuda question with an atkuda answer. Other examples, kuda te yedish v Rasiu, right, to Russia. Atkuda te yedish iz Rasiu, from Russia. By the way, we can combine kuda and atkuda point, uh, phrases to tell we're going from point A to point B or whatever, right? For example, ya yedu iz Moskvi v Petersburg. I'm going from Moscow, or I'm on my way from Moscow to Petersburg. Or ya idu iz biblioteki v abshizitie. I'm on my way, on foot, right, from the library to the dorm. Okay, uh, some other examples, right? Combining multiple gdje phrases or kuda phrases and so forth. Ya yedu v gorod v teater, right? I'm on my way into the city, into town. I'm going to the theater, right? Just stringing together a couple of kuda expressions. Ya bu v gorodje v teatre, right? I was in the city at the theater. Ya vas rashay si z goroda iz teatre, right? I'm I'm on my way back from the city or from town. From the theater. Okay, let's now, uh, after that brief introduction, let's just practice some non-nouns. Okay, so remember, first task here is just to watch out for non-nouns, right? Uh, we know they're a little bit special. In some cases, they are slightly unpredictable. We, we, we've talked about that. But again, assuming we're dealing with a non-noun, we're going to use a different set of prepositions, right? Uh, of, uh, for, for gdje, kuda, atkuda, right? Na plus prepositional, na plus accusative, and s plus genitive, right? Um, anyway, let's look at a quick poster, na zapad, okay? We know that zapad, the points of the compass right there, they are treated as non-nouns. And uh, we see na zapad because we're marching westward. We're marching to the west from the east. Right now, if we look at this, it's quite interesting. The Soviet soldier is smashing a little arrow that says Nach Osten, right? Nach Osten is German for to the east, and then you see a little very convenient translation, Navastok, right? Meaning the Germans, the Nazis, were marching toward the east in the early days of the war after their surprise attack on the Soviet Union. But now the tide has turned, right? And now the Soviets are advancing and they are marching na zapad, right westward to the west okay let's look at a quick table and i'll just read through these i think you get the picture at this point uh, but again just as i'm reading try to visualize very actively what you're really saying 
right? These, these three phrases, the three columns mean very different things. Nastalia, nastol, sastala, navagzalia, navagzal, svagzala. Nastadionia, nastadion, sastadiona. Okay, note the mobile vowel there, but actually I forgot to mention with stole, right? Because we've got s followed by another s followed by an additional consonant. Nabirigu, okay, that noun, as you may recall, happens to take that stressed u in, when, when you're talking about where. Nabirig, zbirga. Na concertie, that's an event. Na concert, skancerta. Rabota, also a non noun. Na rabotie, na rabotu, srabotei. Right, you're going, you're at work, you're going to work, you're coming from work. Lexia, another event. Na lexi, na lexiu, na lex, sorry, slexi, from a lecture. Okay, zapad, point of the compass, compass. Na zapadie, na zapad, zapada, zapada. Now note there, you've got, because of the uh, consonant cluster, you have the s uh, becoming voiced. In this case, that's rather more unusual, although we had a couple of examples up, up top. Zvagzala, for example. Uh, Zbieriga, right? Uh, anyway, zapada, right? That's pronounced basically as a double z, a, a double z, or a double z sound if we're saying that very clearly. Zapada. Okay, let's take a few more um, examples. Some more not, these are all non-nouns. So let's see if we can um, produce vidya kuda atkuda, right? A, a set of these expressions for each noun. Urok, okay, at, at class, uh, your lesson. Na urokye, to the lesson. Na urok, from the lesson, from class. Suroka. Zanyatiya, right, another word for class. Na zanyati, knowing vidya, kuda is na zanyatiya, and atkuda, zanyatiya. Again, there's that double z sound because of the voicing effect of the, the assimilation to the second consonant, z. Rinak, that's a market. Vidya, at the market, na rinkya. Kuda, where are we going? Narinak, where are we coming from? At kuda, srinka, srinka, mobile vowel there in that noun. Number four, lesnitsa. Okay, we're on the stairwell. We're on the stairs. Na lesnitsa, kuda, na lesnitsu. Right, we could say onto the stairs, uh, from the stairs, slesnitsi. Number five, uh, an event, spectacle, right, a performance of some, for, some sort. Na spectacle, na spectacle, uh, sa spectacle. Okay, note the mobile vowel, sa spectacle, because we have the sa plus a pre, right? The sa plus an additional consonant calls for the uh, mobile vowel. Vichirinka, a party, uh, also a, an event, right? So a non noun. Na vichirinkie, na vichirinku, svichirinki. Number seven, dvor, right, a courtyard, the yard of a building. Na, by the way, it could also mean an, the imperial court, by the way. We, we, we will see that use uh, later, probably in book three, book four, when we switch to the imperial period. Anyway, na dvarie, uh, na dvor, uh, sa dvara. Sadvara. Okay, by the way, you will hear that sometimes used with vav, vadvare, uh, but we'll usually treat that as a non noun. It is, after all, a, a flat space. Okay, number eight, dacha. Na dacha, na dachu, zdachi. Sorry, zdachi, zdachi. By the way, there's the, the voicing of the set, right? Zdachi, zdachi because of the de, which is voiced. Number nine, pliage, which means beach. Na pliage, na pliage, spliage. Number 10, ballet, okay, an event, a performance. 
на балете, на балет, с балета, с балета. Number 11, остров, an island. На острове, on the island, на остров, to the island, or literally onto the island, like куда, and from the island, or literally from off of the island, с острова. Number 12, почта, the post office, на почте, на почту, с почты. Let's look at a quick poster. Женщина на паровоз. Like, literally, woman onto the locomotive. This is trying to attract women to work as, uh, as uh, locomotive operators, engineers. Paravoz is something that transports us using para. Para is steam. Okay, let's ask the question. Na paravoz. Is that a где expression, a куда expression, or an откуда, откуда expression? It is a куда expression, right? We want the women to get onto, literally onto the locomotive, right? Into the driver's seat, right? На паровоз. Okay, let's finally conclude with a few examples, right? It's just some discussion questions, first with some в nouns and then some на nouns. And again, uh, ask yourself, what are these questions answering? I'll try to give you a translation. And how would you answer them? So in the Russian, we need to be very clear. Again, где, куда, откуда. And in our response, we would need to reflect that, those, those distinctions. Ты идешь сегодня в библиотеку? Are you going to the library today? That's a куда question. Number two. Ты идешь сегодня в магазин? Are you going to the store today? That's also куда. Three. Ты идешь сегодня в столовую? Are you going to the cafeteria today or the dining hall today? Also, куда? Okay, uh, number four. Ты идешь сегодня в кофейню? Are you going to a cafe, a coffee house today? Okay, that's another куда expression. In fact, I should have read the instructions. I think these are, these are all куда expressions, right? We're asking, where is someone going to, right? So these are all куда, uh, right? Which means in Russian, all accusative. Right, all these nouns are in the accusative. Number five. Ты идешь сегодня в ресторан? Right, куда? To, are you going today to the restaurant? Number six. Ты едешь в Россию в этом году? Are you going to Russia this year? Okay, now some non-nouns. Right, events or open flat spaces. Ты идешь сегодня на лекцию? Are you going to a lecture today? Number eight. Ты идешь сегодня на спектакль? Are you going to a spectacle today, a performance? Number nine, ты идешь сегодня на пляж? Are you going to the beach today? Okay, so that does it for today. So uh, again, ultimately, I guess a fairly simple uh, lesson grammatically, but uh, may take some practice. Again, the real trick is just really insisting in, in your imagination on every time you produce one of these phrases or encounter it. You've got to look at the case setting, look at the preposition, and think very clearly. Где, куда, откуда. Those are three completely separate things in Russian. So it's really a matter of just a bit of practice and some discipline, right? Because the grammar, again, isn't that tricky. And, um, you know, again, we, we I mentioned this the other day that in Russian so often uh, what you're getting is just a little construction, right? Like to tell где, uh, with the v noun, you get v plus prepositional, right? And here today we've learned, we've seen these two sets of prepositional phrases to tell где, куда, откуда. That's really all there is to, to learn ultimately, but we need to practice it and we need to be uh, vigilant, right? Uh, uh, Begitalist. Vigilance is called for, right? Lest we kind of lazily slip back into English and fail, for example, to distinguish between где and куда. Right, um, you know, I say things like this a lot, and you know, it's understandable. But uh, this is one of these topics in Russian that is not too difficult, and so a lot of times students understand it perfectly well, right? On a sort of a theoretical level, but then again, they just kind of they lose sight of the distinction, and they they think maybe it doesn't really matter because it doesn't really matter in English, and so they just kind of forget to even think about it, right? So. Uh, this is a really important one. We're going to keep practicing this as we learn verbs in motion over the next four days. Uh, okay, so brace yourselves. You might want to uh, 
start your day with a nice breakfast or something before you dive into verbs of motion because they're going to be quite a handful. Okay, um, until next time, Das Vidanya Tavarishi. Thank you.